Hi everyone, I'm Simon Gill, a pharmacist prescriber with an interest in chronic pain. I've been working for BCUHB for over 15 years, mainly in the primary care setting. I've also developed a research interest in this area, which has led to the development of the new unit of opioid burden being discussed today. Hi, I'm Dr. Catherine Chaplin. I'm a senior scientist based at the All Wales Therapeutics and Toxicology Centre, or AWTTC. And one of my roles is being part of the National Prescribing Indicators team and working with Simon to develop this new measure. Thank you. This first slide contains all the links to the current guidelines that I'd recommend you use when reviewing patients prescribed opioids for pain. The next slide is a very brief summary of the key points regards to what we mean by chronic pain and the use of opioids to manage it. As you can see, we define chronic pain as being present for three or more months. There are two main types of pain. We define these as chronic primary pain, where there's no clear underlying cause, for example, fibromyalgia. Importantly, opioids are strictly no longer indicated for this type of pain. The second type, chronic secondary pain, is pain caused by an underlying condition, for example, rheumatoid arthritis. And remember, both types can coexist. For opioids, there's limited evidence for long-term effectiveness between one year and probably 12 weeks, and clear long-term risks of serious harms. Generally, where indicated, an opioid trial should use immediate release morphine and last between one and two weeks, or two to three episodes if pain is intermittent. Prescribing should be reduced and stopped if there are no obvious improvements with a single 20 milligram dose. Do not prescribe opioids at doses of 120 milligrams or greater of oral morphine equivalents per 24 hours. The risks outweigh the benefits. Many patients who are supported to reduce or stop opioids describe improved well being, better quality of life, improved mobility, and less pain. This slide details findings from a 2018 report that highlighted the urgent need to screen and assess people on opioids. Subsequently, an opioid burden MPI was introduced for Wales in 2019 to 20. This promotes a prudent approach for prescribing opioid analgesics, taking into account the indication, risks and benefits and encouraging timely review of patients prescribed opioids for chronic pain. Next slide. Here is a summary of the different units used to measure the opioid burden MPI since 2019. DDDs or defined daily dose was used first and is based on the WHO defined average maintenance dose per day for each medicine. The values can change over time and they do not necessarily reflect prescribing in Wales or the UK. Then we use the ADQs or average daily quantity, which were based upon prescribing behaviour in England to help overcome the international differences in DDD values. Similarly, it represents the assumed daily average maintenance dose for each opioid medicine. However, if not updated, the measure can become inaccurate. Next slide. In 2023, significant issues and inaccuracies were highlighted and investigated by AWTTC to the extent that they could no longer be used. The next slide details the development of the new opioid burden measure. I helped develop with the support of Jonathan Side, BCUHB information analyst, and a new unit of measure using oral morphine equivalents. I undertook consultation with the Welsh Pharmacy Pain Group regards consensus on dose equivalences. I also wish to thank Emma Davis, CTM UHB, pain management pharmacist who kindly reviewed the work. This work was then developed and adopted by AWTTC. The OME is a measurement unit in milligrams of oral morphine equivalent dose. This is a widely recognised unit. 
It takes into account the strength of all opioids in a more accurate and relatable measure to inform the NPI. This helps to reduce variation. It is updated monthly and can be used to monitor and benchmark against prescribing in England as well. Here is a table that shows the oral morphine relative potency conversion factors for each chemical entity. The table is live and will be updated accordingly. A word of special warning, this table must not be used to calculate or convert patients' doses from one opioid to another. This requires specialist clinical knowledge. Here is a couple of OME calculation examples. So the OME is calculated for each prescribed individual opioid preparation by multiplying its strength by the oral morphine potency conversion factor. That is then multiplied by the total quantity issued. For example, one oxycodone five milligrams, the conversion factor is 1.5. So it's quite straightforward. Five times 1.5 is 7.5 per single quantity unit. Where a quantity unit is not a solid dose preparation, for example, patches or liquids, this is factored in as per example two where a fentanyl 50 patch, which is 50 micrograms per hour, we multiply that by 72, but using the unit of milligrams, and then the conversion factor by 100, and we get 360 milligrams per quantity of one tablet. Values for all individual preparations are added together to obtain a total OME. This is then divided by the per 1,000 practice list size to give total OME per 1,000 patients. I will now pass over to Kat, who will talk more about the MPI priority areas and how to find and use the data available on Spira. Thank you, Simon. So yes, <clears throat> starting from 2024, 25, the measurement of unit has changed for the opioid burden indicators. Full details are available on the AWTTC website, and this can be accessed by using the QR code in the top corner. As well as updating the unit of measure, we've also updated what's referred to here as the UDG or user defined groups. And these are the baskets of medicines which are used to calculate the data. So the specification document, which is available on our website, does have more details around this. But in summary, these are the two new baskets. So all injectable preparations have now been excluded. The total basket includes all opioids and some combination products, including cocodamol, codidromol. For the high strength basket, these are medicines that, if taken according to the SPC, would mean that a patient is likely on 120 milligrams or day, greater a day. So, for example, the fentanyl patch we've just looked at at 50 micrograms comes out as 360 milligrams a day. However, as a patch lasts for three days, divide this by three and that comes out as 120 milligrams per day. So just a quick look at the data. So this shows total opioid burden up to March 2024. And this shows trends in prescribing over the past three years. And then it also compares Welsh health boards against CCGs in England. And this is the same for the high strength opioids. So what if you actually want to look at the data yourselves? Because this is a measure that we've developed internally, this information isn't available on CASPER. So you're not able to do a deeper dive like you would for the other indicators. So with this in mind, we've created a new dashboard on Spira, which will allow you to drill further down. So I'm now going to swap over and show you this. So what is Spira? So Spira is a server for prescribing information, reporting and analysis, and it is hosted on the AWTTC website. We have a number of dashboards on there already, including two pre-existing indicator dashboards, national prescribing indicators and the MPI reporting tool. These have both been updated now to include the two new opioid indicators. 
as you'll see, there is also this new dashboard, MPI Monthly OMED Measure. And this is what I'm going to talk through now. So when you open it up, it will bring you over to our user guide, which I recommend you can have a look through at your own time. So the first tab we have on here is the summary information. There's a series of filters across the top to help you drill down and look at the data that is most of interest to you. So firstly, you can select the period or periods that you're most interested in. So you can select one or multiple dates, and this is month. You can also select the measure you want demonstrated. So to match with the national prescribing indicators, we'd recommend that this is total OMED per 1,000 patients. You can also choose which of the two MPIs you're going to look at. Once you've done this, the dashboard will display an overview of prescribing at the health board level, at the cluster level, at the practice level, and will also show the trend in prescribing over time. In addition, on the right hand side, there is a table showing at preparation level the most prescribed items for this indicator. If you want to drill down further, there's some jet but drop down menus where you can select which chemical of interest or even down to the preparation level or strengths or however else you would like to group the data. At any time, you can click this reset button and it will reset all the charts on the page. Otherwise, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, on every tab, there is this reset view button that can be used at any time. But users that might be new to Spira or not so comfortable, we just want to reiterate that it's not possible to break any Spira dashboard. And we'd encourage you to have a play and see what it can do. The next tab looks at summary changes. So it will compare the most recent month's data with whichever date is entered in this box. So for example, I can update this, say 06, and it will then compare June 2023 to June 2024. Again, you have the option to select the measure, so we can change this to percentage change. And again, you've got your different indicators, preparation level, chemical level, and it will display at health board, cluster, and a practice level with the accompanying table showing the changes. The third tab shows all the preparations that have been included in the respective basket. And it also shows only those that have been prescribed within the period that you've selected. And again, you have the same options if you want to limit what is displayed. The next tab is where you can really drill down into the data that you're interested in. So it will default to showing it by health board, by cluster and by practice. And it will again show whichever period you've selected. If you hover by practice, a little plus sign will appear. Clicking on this will further break it down by chemical. And to do it again, you can actually break it down to preparation level. And again, use these filters to filter or drill drown as you wish. If you're wanting to use this data or want to explore it further, it's possible to download it onto your own PC. So if you scroll again to the bottom of the page, there's a rectangle with a downward arrow. If you click on this, you've got some different options. So if you want to download any of our graphs or images, you've got that option. If you want to ground out data, then I suggest you use the cross tabs option and this will download it straight into Excel for you. <laughs> the next tab shows medicines by total OMED. So this is just a list of all the included preparations and their total OMED by health board and at all Wales level, which again, you can filter down as you wish. The last tab we've got here is very similar to the drill down one I showed you previously, but instead of being on tabular format, it's a visual graphic representation. So it will default to showing you all the preparations across the health boards and it's useful for spotting outliers. At any point, you can hover over points and this will give you some more information. Additionally, at the bottom here is this plus sign. 
So if you click on that, it will change you from health board view to cluster view. And again, you can have a look across to get an overall picture. And again, you can click on the plus sign and it will then take it to practice view. So this will give you a nice overview, but you can use your filters again at the top to drill down. So as we got Simon here today, I'll choose Betsy Cadwallader as an example. So now I can only see the clusters here. And again, if there's a particular cluster that I think looks interesting, then I can come up here and again, just select the cluster of interest and that will update the graph accordingly and takes me down to all the practices within that cluster. And again, I can hover only any outliers. And a final reminder, if you want to go back at any point, use the reset view. So this is just a very, very quick overview of the new opioid prescribing indicators and the associated Spira dashboard. We hope it's been of interest and useful. Thank you very much.